Hi everybody, it's July 25, 2018. I will link below to everything. I'm going to start this video with just playing a few minutes of Gregory Manorino and listen to what he has to say. How many of you, with the show of hands, don't be afraid, put your hand up. Remember, a couple of weeks ago, when I came out here and I said that farmers were going to require and get a public bailout. Well, <laughs> I hate to be right sometimes. Well, that just happened. Uh, Twelve billion dollars uh, the Trump administration is now uh, putting towards relief for farmers that are getting hurt by this escalating trade war. Now again, how many of you would show of hands, put your hand up, believe that this is the end? Uh, no, it is not the end. This is just the opening salvo. Not only is this the opening salvo uh, to public bailouts, remember too big to fail? Well, President Trump has just set a new standard uh, across the board. Any industry, any now, that is hurt in any way by this escalating trade war is going to receive a public bailout, including the two big to fail banks. So you can see where this is going. Look, I don't care what side of the aisle you sit on. You shouldn't sit on any side. You should be right down the center, balance. That's what life is all about, balance. That's the secret, okay? Now, personally, and I've covered this, I know there's a lot of you out here um, who who can't see what's going on because you're so polarized one way or the other. But the first trick is to stop with that. I understand, believe me, that there are trade imbalances which have existed for decades upon decades upon decades. Now, understand, I understand that our country here, the United States, and I did a whole video about this last week, cannot win a debt war. We just became $12 billion more in debt than we were yesterday, today. Where is that $12 billion coming from? Ah, where is it coming from? You. Listen to just a few minutes of this. Well, yesterday, um, later in the day, we found out that the Trump administration is going to resume billions of dollars in payments for Obamacare. Okay, listen. Our, uh, um, Gregory Manorino, he talks about the balance. He talks about being in the middle. He talks about the polarization, you know, these polarized minds, the, this dichotomous thinking. The red are going to help us. No, the blue are going to help us. All right, the only one <clears throat> who's going to help you is you. You, uh, in the aggregate, people have to come together. And those Trump supporters, you've got to get into the details to find out what Trump is doing. Now, these trade imbalances were brought upon countries. It was all part of the engineering toward a new world order. Now, Trump comes in. I'm going to make those trade imbalances right. You know, I'm going to correct them. So, the trade war escalates, and what happens? Americans are being hurt. The imports that you get from China are going to only get more expensive. That will hurt Americans. Farmers, feeling that pinch from the upping of the tariffs that Trump did, I'll make you right. You'll get a bailout of $12 billion. Trump, Obamacare, we've got to get rid of it. He's putting billions into Obamacare. What is going on here? Trump is part of the, you know, you listen to mainstream media. Oh, how the economy is doing great and Americans are back to work and the tax cuts helped so many Americans and now they can start businesses. All of it bullshit. It's bullshit. Now, the, 
world market check. Everything good? Nope. Non, main, ni, yet, no, no. All is not well in financial markets. And if you've noticed some articles within the last couple of months, so many are still writing, the economy is going to collapse. The home sales, how the housing market is doing, that is one of the greatest indicators of how our economy is doing. Americans losing their only, <laughs> for so many, hard asset is their home. Americans more and more cannot afford to buy a home. And then you look at the affordable housing crisis. There's almost no affordable housing out there for Americans. We are still being destroyed. New home sales tumbled to eight-month lows despite price plunge. Uh, housing prices hit breaking point leading to collapse in demand. And, you know, let me just read these few sentences. The market remains notably bifurcated as 18% of new homes sold in June cost more than half a million dollars, up from 17% in May. What does that mean? The widening of the rich and poor gap, it's getting wider. It's not closing. And now we're seeing only the rich can buy a home. Demand weakened in three of four U.S. regions, including a 7.7% drop in the South, the largest area. The decline in sales left 301,000 homes available nationwide in June, the most since March 2009. I have seen throughout the weeks a housing crisis is coming again. Well, we're in a housing crisis because, because Americans cannot afford half a million dollars to buy a home. Now, if you're going to argue with me and say, on my street there's a home for 95000 what are you talking about? You're not looking at the bigger picture. Um, you know, so the housing prices leading to collapse in demand. And you have a collapse in demand, that means that housing prices are only going to get higher and they'll sit vacant. But look at more articles, the titles. Apartment construction in 2018 expected to decline 11% after strong six-year run. Existing home sales decline third month despite rising inventory. Real hourly earnings decline for production workers and flat for all employees as everything gets more expensive. Housing starts unexpectedly plunge 12.3% in June. Permits down 2.2%. So something is wrong with what you're hearing from mainstream media about the economy doing swell and then what you read from an awful lot of people who are not in mainstream media. The affordability crisis may have reached a breaking point in Portland, San Jose, and Seattle, in San Francisco, in California. Um, California, the, the housing market is way, way on its way to collapse except for the very rich. Southern California home sales crash, a warning sign to the nation, to the nation. Southern California homes sold in June was at a record 536,000.
a 7.3% increase. Most Americans cannot afford this at all. And that means the economy is not doing good. Wide and unprecedented price fluctuations are causing financial chaos for U.S. businesses. Uh, heat and drought really hurting farmers. And let me just tell you, I had a conversation with a friend in Houston whose home was flooded out, not by Harvey, but by the Army Corps of Engineers' decision to release the waters in the reservoirs that flooded out thousands of homes. All of these natural disasters, unless someone has an awful lot of money, which most Americans do not anymore, recovery from these disasters, it's extremely hard. So where they were, the condition, the circumstance that they were living in before the natural disasters, getting back to that, it's, it's impossible because everything is getting worse. So that friend, she gets her home flooded, they get rescued, they go into a FEMA hotel, uh, they live there for a little while, then FEMA denies them any more benefits for the hotel, then they have to find uh, an apartment to rent in Houston, which that is a very expensive area. On top of now the monthly rent, they're still having to pay the fees to the homeowner association and they get notice from FEMA that they have to continue paying their premiums for their flood insurance on a home that they can't get into and live. And if they don't, then they have to pay back all of their benefits that they got from FEMA. So you have to continue paying that flood insurance, especially for those who don't have the money to just pay back all of the benefits. But that flood insurance, I've posted videos on Kafka Winston World, the FEMA, the National Program for Flood Insurance, wow, is that a scam that is leaving FEMA rich, insurance companies rich, and Americans are getting screwed. So they rent that apartment. They live there for a couple of months. Their health is getting worse. The Wi-Fi, the 5G is now her husband is sensitive. They feel that financial pinch getting tighter. They say, to hell with it. I can't live in this apartment. We will, because their first floor was still not completed, the renovation, like six months, eight months after the flood, they say, we'll just live in the second floor of our home they put up a door, but their home is toxic, the mold, the, and, and it not being completed for so long, they just looked at bare walls, just the studs. Now they have sheetrock, finally, the contractors came in and put up sheetrock, but still it is not completed. They find out it's not going to be completed until at least Christmas. They're getting sicker in their own home now. Now, the husband has to go and pull out monies from his retirement or his uh, 401k. I'm not sure what it was. He has to pay the penalties. And now they just put an offer on a home where all of this is forced because their health is just getting worse. Do you know what? how many Americans are really suffering the consequences of everything that is going on? And nearly 40 million Americans are still on food stamps. You know, how many times have I heard Sean Hannity, other people, in that, these talk show hosts talk about Trump finally got millions of Americans off food stamps. They're still on food stamps. Food stamps, the, the, the amount you get has been greatly decreased. Homelessness continues to skyrocket. Unprecedented surge. Please look at 
the big picture. The trade war is already having an impact on the U.S. economy. All of us will be impacted. Trump, the tariffs, now he just came out and said he's going to put a 25% uh, tariff on all car imports. So that these, these trade wars, Americans are suffering. And then Trump comes out and says, don't worry, I'll bail you out. Does that make any sense to you? It just puts us deeper and deeper into debt while the quote-unquote elite and our U.S. corporation continues to profit. I'll link below to everything.